everyone and welcome to this introductory class on pandas in python pandas is a data analysis and data science library and it is important for us data engineers data analysts and data scientists to learn this to perform various analytic tasks using python we did a getting started session first covering all the aspects of pandas in brief and now we are going to start covering each aspect in a little bit more detail if you would like to practice what we are learning in this session, a good idea is to install Python and Jupyter first if you have not already done so. There's already a tutorial on that and the link is provided above and in the description box so you can access it if you still need to install Jupyter Notebook or Python on your laptop system. So today is a very beginner's tutorial. So if you're new to Python and pandas, it is a good start for you. We are going to learn how to read the data and we are going to take an example of a CSV file. We are going to read data from that file and we'll perform some very basic tasks like reading a column from that file, reading multiple columns from that file, selecting a row based on position and so on. We will be also focusing on the syntax because Python is very particular with the syntax. So it is important to get familiarized with how to write the various methods and how to use the syntax. The very first step before using any library in Python is to import that library. So we are going to run our import command as import pandas as pd. And now we will be able to use all the functions and methods associated with this library using the reference as pd. Now the next step is to be able to read the data in the file. We have performed this step early in the getting started tutorial. So I'm just going to copy that very simply. Now df is my reference to the data frame. I'm going to read the data from a CSV file. The location of the CSV file is here in this folder. The name of the CSV file is employees.csv and we just need to append a r over here so that there's no Unicode error. The method that we need to use or the function that we need to use is read underscore CSV. So once we say pt.read underscore CSV and just define the path and the file name, the results of that read query will be stored in the data frame. And this is the name of the data frame that we have defined. So once we have this query, we can just execute this query. And if you just do a DF to reference to that data frame that we just created over here and do a shift and enter, you're going to get a view of the data. Now we have very limited records in our data. That's why we are able to view all the data. If you have lots and lots of records in your Excel sheet or your CSV file, then you will get a view, a sample of those records. You will get some records from the top and some records from the bottom. Now very good. Uh, command to get an idea of what kind of data you have got is to just run a df dot shape command and this is going to tell you how many rows you have so the first output is the rows and the second one is how many columns you have in your data now if you're not sure of the columns because there can be many many columns you just say df dot columns and it is going to provide you all the column names in your data so you have these column names you have employee id you have full name you have department id and so on now we have been referencing to data frame again and again why is this a data frame because it is a two-dimensional structure there's something also called a series a series is a one-dimensional structure so it can have only one, it can only have a list of values like a single column. But if you have multiple columns and multiple rows, then it becomes a data frame. So most of us are familiar with SQL and are from that background. So we can reference a data frame to something like a table in a database. Now the command that we just ran over here, the df command, this is somehow similar to a select star query because it just gives you all the columns and a sample of rows from your data. Now, if you want to select only data from a particular column, then you have to first say df, which is going to refer to the data frame, which is storing the data from the CSV file. Then you have to give a pair of square brackets and then define your column name. So let's say we want the column name to be employee ID. So we have to write it in the right format. So we say employee ID 
and it it is a string name so for data frame we are passing a value we're just passing a value to the data frame which is a column name which is a string so it has to be enclosed within quotes so if you do not follow this syntax you're going to end up with an error so for first you have written this uh, syntax you can just do an execute and you will see that you have got some values now these values might look confusing to you so let's select some other column which is actually has some different kind of values and not just an integer value so i'm just going to do a run and you will see the values over here so when i do a run i can either go over here and click on this button run and it will execute the query from that cell the code from the cell that we have written or you can do a shift plus enter now you will also observe that when we have selected the data, there are some integer numbers generated on the left side. These integer numbers are nothing but indexes generated by Python. These are default index which are generated by Python. So there are two different kind of functions that we can use with indexes to access the data, which are the lock, LOC, and the iLock function. Uh, there will be in the next video, we will be covering them in detail, but we will touch upon them in this video towards the end. So now we have the data from one column, which is the full name column. Now, just let's just try to change this. So I have the column. I'm just going to access the data from the full name column, but let me just put it all in lowercase and see what happens. So if I execute this, you're going to get an error. So you have to be specific in terms of where you are using a capital letter, where it's going to be a lowercase alphabet. It is very, the Python is very specific in terms of case. So it has to be the exact case in which your column name is. So if it changes the case, then it is going to give you an error message. So we have to be specific with regards to this. So let's convert it back to the right name which is full name and execute this again and then i'm going to get my output again now let's say i want to select multiple columns so i just do not want to select one column i want to select multiple columns then what would be the obvious thing to do is just separate the two column names by a comma and let's say what let's first go and check out which columns we have so we have something called department id so I'm just going to include department ID over here and try to execute this query. So I'm just going to do a shift and enter. And what I get is an error message again. So why are we getting this error message? Because you cannot just simply pass multiple values to this data frame with this syntax. Now what we're doing is these are multiple values, which in effect are a list of values. So here we are passing a list of values. So you have to enclose this list of values within another pair of square brackets. So the list of values has to be enclosed in another pair of square brackets. Only then this is going to work. So now we have two pairs of square brackets, if you observe. And now we have to execute this and you will get the two columns. So you have the full name and the department ID column over here. Now, like we have the top function in the SQL to select the topmost rows, we can just do a DF dot head and it is going to give us some of the topmost rows. So here you see that we get some four rows from the top. We can also use DF dot tail function and this is going to return the records from the bottom. Now, what if I want to select only the first two rows, or let's say I want to select all rows from the second row till the fifth row, then this can be done as well by specifying the index position of those rows. So, you have these numbers in bold, which you see over here. These are actually default index, which is generated by Python. And we can use these numbers. This is always going to be an integer number and it is going to start from zero. And we can use these integers to identify the position of rows. But to do that, we need to use some different functions called the LOC 
or the lock or the i lock function now i lock is integer location so it will recognize or identify these rows and columns by these integer values of the indexes so let's do an i lock first so df dot i lock and again a pair of square brackets and let's say we want uh, we want the second row so put second and let's just execute this much so what we have got now is we have got the second row now it's not in a single line but the column names are all over on this side and the values of those columns are on this side so now we have got just the second row or second record from our data now second record is it is aligning to this particular record Okay, which has the employee ID 3, which is actually the third record in our table. But since the index positions start from 0, so when you say you want the second record, you have to give the index position as 1 because it will always be n minus 1. So what it has given you is the third record. If you want the second row, the second record from the table, then you have to give n minus 1. And this is the actual second record from the table. Now, let's say I want the second and the third record. So what we can do, just copy it over here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 1, comma, 3. And now execute this. So what we have got here is a single value. So this is not a row that we've got. We have got a single cell value. So this is uh, this was obviously not the right syntax to get the two rows or second or third row or whichever rows we indicated by these numbers. This syntax gives you the first. So by first, you mean the second row, the actual second row. Let's just talk in terms of index positions. So the first row by index position, row with the index number of one and the column the second argument is the column with the index number of three which has a value of fifty five thousand so let's go above and check our data so what we have the row with index of one which means this row and the column with index of three which is going to be this is going to be zero index one index two index and three index so this has given you the value of the column salary so when you write like this and you separate by a comma the second argument is going to give you is going to identify the column uh, by the index location position of the column now if you actually want two rows then what you need to do is put another pair of square brackets so that it identifies that this is a list of value that you are passing. So now if you're going to execute this, then you're going to get the two rows. So here you have to understand whenever you're going to pass a list of values, you need to use another pair of square brackets. Now we are going to change the same query. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to apply a comma and then I'm going to specify that I want my uh, position by, I want my column identified by the third index position. So now if I put three over here and re-execute, I'm going to get the values from the, from these two rows for the salary column. Okay. Now this also we can change. We can also put a pair of bracket over here and specify multiple columns so if I say 4 as well and execute this I'm going to get the values of the two columns now this is going to be difficult every time if we want to identify the values by indexes because the easier way to do it is to know the column name that is where the concept of the another function which is the loc the location function comes so location function identifies the rows and the columns based on something known as labels so you can provide a label name and then be able to access those columns so what we can do now instead of df.iloc we can say df.loc and in square brackets let's say we want the two rows so we want two rows we are going to specify a list of values so another pair of square brackets so i'm going to specify two and three over here and then i'm going to specify a column name for which i want the value so i want the value for salary column so i just put salary over here a column name is a string value so it has to be within quotes 
and now we execute this and you will get the the results based on the column name again you can specify multiple column names over here you will need to put another pair of square brackets so whenever you type a square bracket it will put the enclosing bracket along with it so if you are typing it after you have typed the list of values you need to be sure that you put the right number of brackets so let's say salary and what other department id column was there so whichever order you specify of the column names over here the same in the same order you're going to get your output so now you get the output of the two columns as well. Now there are other options that we can use with these two functions, which we are going to see in the next video. I think this should be enough. If you are an absolute beginner to pandas and Python, this should be enough for you to practice and get used to the syntax of writing and accessing the column names. In the next video, we will see what are the different use cases of LOC and ILOC functions. So keep tuned.